Welcome back to Q Dads. I'm Steve, and just when we thought Foundation couldn't get any better, episode 9 drops on our screens. This episode had even more shocking twists than last week's episode, and still some great dialogue between certain characters. And wow, what an episode, and what an amazing final scene, making us question how this series is going to end. Episode 9, titled Long Ago, Not Far Away, delivers on that episode 9 brilliance as it did back in season 1. And yes, as we predicted, the episode starts with a great backstory of Damozel as we go back 610 years to a young prince, Cleon I, the last of the Eton dynasty. He wanders the halls and stumbles through the painted doorway, heading deep within the secret chamber, mirroring Dusk's footsteps from the previous episode. The narration of Cleon I is great throughout this scene, and explains that he's the first person down there in centuries. Here is where we get our first look at a deconstructed damozel, broken down into segments and trapped for an eternity by her previous ruler, Aburanis. We learn so much about Damazel. She's 18,000 years old. Her name wasn't always Damazel, and that she was the leader of a group of soldiers back during the robot war on Earth. Not only is this scene visually stunning, but it's great to see such details they've gone to, like informing us that Damazel faked tears for the previous ruler, a subtle detail, but one that adds character. We even get to see Cleon the First as he goes through every stage of Empire that we know, and the traits they have, slowly building that trust with Damazel. As we come to the end of this incredible opening segment, Cleon the First, as Dusk, offers Damazel the freedom along with a box of tools from Earth, solidifying the planet pattern was in fact our solar system. Here we get a tug at our heartstrings, as I almost feel sorry for Damazel. She is given freedom, but only for a few seconds, as Dusk implants a device in her, preventing her from harming him. He informs her of his plan to create the genetic dynasty, and we seem to get real tears from Damazel, as she is trapped for an eternity yet again. What was that device? How did he know it would alter her capability? We assume the box that had our solar system on was always Damazel's, but it's clear now Cleon found it. But from where, we don't know. Could they have returned to Earth to acquire this? Following on from the chip, there was so much information to dissect in this section. Firstly, Damazel mentions about a previous emperor having a concubine whose mind was wiped after every visit. I assume this is where Empire gets the idea from, as clearly his parents would have no need for this. Secondly, the ability to wipe minds seems to have been around for a long time, which always makes me think how much has been forgotten about the previous times, and more importantly, does Damazel herself know how to wipe minds? As even Cleon I mentioned, his clones will have selected memories. I just wonder if Damazel is able to mess with their minds as they grow, to force certain outcomes. I think the biggest drop of information here, in a blink and you'll miss it moment, is her ability to change bodies. Keep you from transmitting yourself out of this body. Or as I like to think of it, transferring her mind. I guess in a weird way, similar to Talon Bond. Could this be some epic foreshadowing of the future? Currently, she's forced to serve Empire or Cleon the First. If she was somehow able to transfer her mind though, would that chip in her back no longer force her to be loyal to Empire? Leading on from this, can she transfer her mind to a living thing? If so, is Sarith a potential target? As we come to terms that Damazel is in fact Empire, Cleon I traps Rue and Dusk within the same room Damazel was trapped in. Was Cleon I the one that called Damazel back to Trantor later in the episode? We get a quick scene where Salvor frees Gale and uses the sensors from the previous episode to block the ritual and bring everyone to their knees. We also get a good slap from Salvor. Notice here how the camera moved onto the little boy, Josiah, again focusing on him, even though he wasn't part of the main scene. Is this another hint towards who the mule is? More on this in a moment. We see some great banter between Belrios and Hobomalo as they compare sizes of their dead rulers. This is an hilarious scene, and I'm never sure on Hober's intentions, as he's so quick to respond to anything. 
Is he part of Harry's plan? His own intentions? Or something else? I notice here that he did try to stop them from taking the implants made by the spacer. Is this down to the plan he was given by Harry? Is there a secret directive we're not aware of? Day enters the ship and makes it clear that he is the Empire that chose peace. But at this point, is he still lying? Or does he genuinely believe he could change the outcome? Damazel mentions to Belrios that she chose him for a reason. I don't think this is a throwaway line, but I'm not sure what she meant at this stage. Will he eventually take sides with Harry and bring down Empire? Day finally steps foot on Terminus for the first time and asks to see the church. That's right, the church is a lie, and they are in fact creating personal auras, but I'm actually surprised by this scene. Day is on Terminus, and they create personal auras. Would this not be a good time to attack? Why do they not all wear them and capture Day there and then? But instead, it's like they stood back and let the upcoming events happen. After a final magic show of Polly, turning iron into gold, Day stabs Director Cermak and orders the strike on the Invictus. The tables turn for a second as the Invictus turns operational, but here the ships shoot in a pattern, just like Harry's math, not random. We travel back to Ignis as Salvor gives Gale the Prime Radiant to hold. Salvor fights Laron, who keeps turning into Hugo and throwing her off her game. Talim is already on the ship and takes the Radiant off Gale. Here we take a quick trip through a vision as Talim uses Gale's dad to continue to mess with Gale's mind, a last ditch attempt to convert her as Talon does still need her body. She jumps to the future to show a dying Salvor, looking like she's been shot, but then we get the booming voice of the mule Talon! as he comes even closer to Talon. This scene already disproves what the internet has been talking about. Talon Bond is not the mule. Once again though, we're treated to a time travelling vision as the mule can clearly see Talon and even calls out to her. What effects will this have? And I still question if the mule is able to alter things in the past, even though Talon told Gale it was her own mind hurting her. Regardless of the vision, it still keeps the theory open that Josiah could potentially be the mule, as he would know who Talon was. Was that Josiah trying to warn Talon, but she mistakes it for fear? Back on Terminus, Day heads to the vault, and Day strips himself of his aura and attire before speaking with Harry. Harry invites him in, and here Damazel calls him Cleon. Cleon! Is that a sign of desperation, as she knows they are past the point of no return? Glaywen leads a team of fighters to clear a path to the Invictus, shooting the organic life in the back of the ship. Here, Glaywen destroys the engines on the Invictus, but doesn't quite make it back in time and falls down to Terminus. We are then back with Day inside the vault. Harry tries to convince him that the math is right, and peace can be achieved. Day, though, doesn't agree, and asks Harry to admit the math is wrong due to Day breaking the pattern, which Harry excuses for a blip, and that the outcome will still be the same. Then we get the bombshell that he is willing to bring the Invictus down on the planet, and in a last ditch attempt, the Prime Radiant is offered, which Day takes, which means Empire and Gale now have copies of the Radiant. This whole conversation was weird. It was almost like Day was irrelevant. It always seemed as though Damazel was Harry's target, he even says he can teach Damazel. Was this always Harry's intention? It appears he knows Damazel is a robot. What better way to let his ideas live on? Not only that, I think Harry figured out Damazel is the real one in charge. He can't predict individuals, but as she's a robot, does she not count towards this? I'm starting to think the first foundation was always meant to end here, and Harry's plan was for Empire to get the Prime Radiant, so it would fall into the hands of Damazel. Back on Ignis, Salvor kills Laron. She tries to save Gale from Talon, but with them both pinned against the wall, we question how they will escape. Then, surprising us all, Harry appears and kills Talon, smashing her in the face with a pole, confirming he did not die. What a shock! I know, right. As Day and Damazel head back to the ship, she informs us that she must go, called to another task. Is this Cleon the First calling her, or maybe something more? Another AI. Anyway, she informs Day that he was used, and she tried to have sex to change his mind about ending the genetic dynasty, and delivers the best line ever. No, you're a sperm led by its waving flagellum, mistaking its render motion for complexity. Bell has a final moment with Glowen, before Terminus is brought down by Day. We watch as Polly plants his flag, higher than any other children did previously, 
Hoba comforts Constance, and we all watch as the madness in the Empire's eye grows. What an episode this was. We got that damazel backstory we've been hoping for, and a surprise planet destroyed, or as I like to think of it, an unfounding of a foundation. And I don't think anyone predicted that. Was this all part of Harry's plan, or did Day really break psycho history? He did say to Zamazel, whatever happens, this is about survival for all of us. The future is invented every second. Again, the choice of words here, leading me to believe Harry is only talking to Damazel. By using us rather than humanity, he implies Damazel's future is at risk. But all can be changed for the better. It seems as though myself and Ben have had some theories proven right and some wrong. We've been saying for a while that Cleon the First must have messed with Damazel's code, which he clearly did. I did think for a second Talon was the mule, but Harry put an end to that theory. Still though, Ben and quite a few viewers keep mentioning that Josiah could be the mule, and taking a look at the description for next episode, season final, Gale, Salvor and Harry chart a new path forward on Ignis, Damazel heads to Trantor, taking actions that will change Empire forever. This leads us to believe that the second foundation will be on Ignis. Ben mentioned earlier in the season that maybe Josiah is the mule and is expelled from Ignis. He also mentioned that maybe the planet can be moved. I don't think it's Josiah, but I will agree something is off with the boy. Maybe Talim isn't dead, and maybe she managed to get her mind inside of his. At this point, we've seen stranger things happen. The last line of that description though, for the next episode, taking actions that will change empire forever. The use of the word empire and not the empire makes me think Damazel will finally be able to hurt empire directly. With somehow her rules being overwritten, how you ask? Well, could Harry's mind be in the Prime Radiant? Or could it be the being that presents herself as Callie? Are they able to communicate with Damazel? If so, would either of them, or maybe both, be able to break the code? As we've seen before, having your mind slash data transferred into the Prime Radiant is possible. And not only that, time moves differently in the Radiant. And this is why I think it's always been Harry's plan to get the Prime Radiant in the hands of the Empire and eventually into the hands of Damazel. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think we'll see the mule in the last episode of the season? Or do you think we already have, but as Josiah? Do you think Damazel is going to have Dusk killed, as now he knows too much? And finally, did you expect the first foundation to meet its end? Thanks for stopping by. Our weekly cast will be dropping in a couple of days, so come join us as we discuss this epic episode. And as always, catch you next time with something new.